Streaming live at Joint Base Andrews and Marine One as it lands and taxis toward the podium from which Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, will deliver his farewell address. And there in the background is Air Force One, the presidential jet. He still has control of that, and this is in part the reason for his early morning farewell ceremony as president still has a right to use that plane and he will use it to take him to Mar-a-Lago, Palm Beach in Florida, where he will move he and Melania and their 14-year-old son, Barron. But we'll watch as the doors open and Donald Trump and Melania Trump emerge and we will listen in to the farewell ceremony, the 21-gun salute and former chief political correspondent. He's in Virginia today and, and with us and watching all of this unfold. Fold. Good morning. Good morning, Heather. Nice to see you. We, we have so much to talk about. We're going to look back. We're going to look ahead to the Biden presidency over the next 30 minutes, Keith. But I just want to, this moment of transition and the end of the presidency of Donald Trump, can you sum it up for us? Well, I mean, it's ending in a way that I think uh, is almost a perfect example of Trump's personality, unable to deal with his own defeat, unable to see that he is not as he is not the person uh, in the public's eyes that he is in his own eyes, has chosen not to play. He's taking the ball and going home. He's not uh, adhering to any of the customs and traditions of the transition to office in any way at all. I mean, what we saw last week will be the most remembered example of that with the storming of the Capitol. But there has also been this reluctance to, to uh, cooperate with the incoming Biden administration and the greater reluctance to even acknowledge that he lost the, the election. And that's now um, perfectly capped by his refusal to participate in all of the tr traditions and norms of the transition of power. He's leaving Washington before before Biden uh, takes the oath of office. He won't be on the podium as other former presidents have been in the past. There will be no ride to the Capitol sharing the, the uh, limousine with the incoming president. There will be no letter in the Oval Office to welcome the new president to the office. Uh, nothing like that. It will be a very Donald Trump transition. Uh, bitter, self-centered, angry, um, and not something I think that even he will be able to look back on with much pride. But he lives in the moment, and this is how he wants to handle that moment. And as uh, we can see, uh, the steps are down, and we would expect to see Donald Trump in just a moment. Keith, um, it was interesting, as he left the White House and got on this chopper, we're now hearing what he said to the reporters, that it was the honor of a lifetime to have served as president. And he also said, hope to see you again. Now, that's something that he indicated as well in the videotaped address he released last night, talking about how this is just the beginning and looking to the future. The best is yet to come. What do you think he's planning? I think he's trying to keep alive the prospect of a second Trump presidency as Grover Cleveland had a second Cleveland presidency uh, in the late 19th century. He was elected, defeated, and re-elected, the only president uh, ever to have done so. Trump hopes to become, or hopes people will believe he becomes the second uh, president to do that. But I think it's important to note what Trump has discovered since November 3rd, which is that he can raise an awful lot of money uh, from his uh, devotees uh, in 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 the case of the last few months, it was on the pretext that he was challenging the legitimacy of the election and that there was a cost to that. But in fact, the money was going to uh, a political action committee for him to dispose of as he chooses. And I think that's probably uh, something he wants to keep alive. I think that's something that you'll probably see him cranking up for as long as he's able to do it. And those things are intertwined with the public's belief or, or Trump. MAGA people's belief that there is a political future for Donald Trump. But the political future of, for Donald Trump was never very strong. He is, he has presided over a remarkable losing streak for the uh, Republican Party. Not only did they lose just about every important election since 2016, uh, which they won only narrowly and only in the elect electoral college, um, but the, you know, the, the margin of his defeat uh, was significant for the presidency. And in the space of just four years, they went from winning the White House, the Senate, and the House to losing all three, which is something that hasn't been done since uh, Herbert Hoover did it in 1932. Keith, On top can I, of that, can I just pause just for just one moment? Just again, here is uh, the president and Melania Trump, the First Lady, as they've arrived on the podium, and the 21 gun suit is underway. Thank you so much for watching our radio. Please share with your friends and fellows on social media. Thank you.